I believe it's a misnomer. I now believe that the right size business can find you. You know, we, we're doing, we're running these businesses um, to provide ourselves with comfort, financial freedom, to be of service to others. And there's a certain point the business can become unwieldy. And now we're not being of service. We're too distracted. We're too overwhelmed and stressed. Um, a business can, can grow in revenue, but the profit can struggle. And that is horrible. You want to talk mm -hmm. about a horrible lifestyle. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. This is session number 49 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm your host, Gordon Brewer, and I'm so glad, really thrilled that you've joined me for this episode. It's really uh uh, a milestone episode for me in, in a number of ways and that I've just celebrated uh, one year of having the podcast. Uh, when I looked at the metrics uh, yesterday for the podcast, we've had over 10,000 downloads of the podcast since I started it. And uh, the numbers just keep growing and it's just so exciting. And I'm just really appreciative to you for listening to the podcast and taking part with me in this journey. And the other big milestone is you've, if you've been listening to some previous episodes and uh, if you're on my email list and the emails that I send out, today is when I interviewed Mike McCallowitz. And um, Mike um, is just a gem of a person, and I'm so happy that he agreed to be on the podcast. But I want to tell you a little bit of the backstory about how this came to be and why I am really so... Um, I guess, excited about Mike McCallowitz and his books, uh, the main one being Profit First, but his new book called Clockwork. And uh, he's got several other books called, Sur one called Surge, another one called um, The uh, Pumpkin Plan, and then the other one I think is called The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. But I'll have links in the show notes to all of his books so that you can check them out. And those are affiliate links to Amazon. So just full disclosure there that I do get a commission on those at no cost to you if you like, choose to use those links. So anyway, the backstory is this. Um, most of you know that I've done some work with Joe Sanok and I've been a part of some of the mastermind groups with Joe and uh, as kind of a parallel path to that, I got to know Casey Compton, who is also doing some of that same work with Joe and Casey um, was interviewed by Joe um, uh, several, I, I probably should try to put the in the show notes, if I remember to do that, in the show notes, the episode where Joe inter interviews Casey around building a million-dollar private practice. Casey is one of those people whose superpowers is really being able to to organize things well and create systems and processes that enabled her to scale her practice very quickly to a uh, literally a multi-million dollar practice with multiple locations. And she did that over a three-year period. If you'll go back and listen to episode number 47 of this podcast, you'll be able to hear my interview with Casey. But anyway, Casey introduced me to um, this book, Profit First. And so I thought, well, let me go check it out to find out um, more about it. So I got the book and started reading it and just couldn't put it down. And in fact, I was frustrated because I was in the middle of doing a, a summer camp with some youth that I volunteer for every year. And I was into the book and I couldn't, uh, you know, I was frustrated that I didn't have time to read it. So I bought the audio book so I could listen to it and finish the book all the way back from the, the summer camp that I was doing with those youth. So um, anyway, that that's kind of a little bit of the backstory, but Casey has fully implemented the, the profit first system in her in her, uh, in her practice. And when I found out I was going to be able to have Mike McCallowitz on this podcast, um, 
I got let Casey know, and she was just so excited herself. And I said, "Okay, Casey, uh, that's that's my challenge. I'm going to pull you in on this." And so, Casey Compton is also uh, kind of we do a dual interview with Mike Michalowicz, and I'm so thankful to Casey that she was able to do this just spur of the moment. Um, but um, also, one of the things I want to let you know about, uh, just uh, I guess number one in celebration of being a uh, one year into uh, this podcast, um, and also just to give you all out there just a little fun thing to do, I'm doing a giveaway um, for the two two books that we talk about in this podcast, uh, Profit First and the other one being Clockwork uh, by Mike Michalowicz. So if you'll go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash contests with an S, uh, you can enter the contest. And the more you enter the contest, the more chances you get at winning it, obviously. But also, the more you share the contest with others will give you more chances to win. And so I'm going to give away, uh, there's going to be two winners. I'm going to give away a, a copy of the um, the Profit First book and the clockwork book and both winners will get both books along with uh one of my little um practice of therapy tumblers just as a just another little kind of small bonus with all of this so go over and enter that contest and uh enter your chance to win those two books plus the tumbler and like i said i'm gonna draw names for two people to be winners and we'll announce that further on down the road here uh, in about two weeks from the time that I air the podcast. Um, the other thing I want to let you know about this episode, um, I've divided the uh, my interview with with Mike into two episodes uh, because it was a long interview and I wanted to make sure that people had a reasonable time for listening to it because it's kind of hard to listen to a, a podcast that's over an hour long. So I, I cut it in half. And so the first part is today. This is part one in this episode. Um, and then I'll have part two come out next week, which will be the conclusion of my interview with Mike Michalowicz. But the other thing that I'm doing is I've when I recorded this, I also recorded it in video. So I'm going to put the video up on YouTube and I'll put the link to the YouTube video in the show notes, but you can go over to YouTube. And I think if you just search the practice of therapy, you'll find my channel on YouTube. I've not really mentioned that much about that. I use YouTube mainly just to store videos that I do and webinars and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, you can get access to that and watch the entire interview in video if you prefer to do it that way. So without further ado, here is Mike Michalowicz. <music> Well, welcome, folks, to the Practice of Therapy podcast. I am so thrilled that this day has finally come. It's kind of like Christmas in a way. <laughs> uh, and I'm so happy to have my guest today, Mike Michalowicz. And also, I've got as as a repeat guest along with this, because I know she's a big fan, is Casey Compton. So, But Mike Michalowicz, for those of you that don't know him, I'm going to tell you, you've got to get to know his stuff. He is the author of Profit First, Surge, The Pumpkin Plan, and his newest book is called Clockwork. And by his 35th birthday, Mike had founded and sold two companies, one a private equity and another and another to a Fortune 500 company. Today, he is he is running his third multi-million dollar venture, Profit First Professionals. And Mike is also a former small business columnist for the Wall Street Journal and a former business makeover specialist on MSNBC. And over the years, Mike has traveled the globe speaking with thousands of entrepreneurs and is here today to share the best of what he's learned. Mike, so glad you're here. Gordon, thank you. And Casey, thank you so much for having me. This is an absolute joy to be here. Yes, yes. And I, I you know, and we were talk chatting before we started the podcast and, and it's really true, Mike, that you have made an impact on several hundreds, if not thousands of uh, 
mental health professionals that are wow. going into private practice and really trying to learn the business side of things and figure all that out. So uh, just thanks for all that you do well, and your, your generosity. Well, thank you. And that means the world to me to hear that. Mm -hmm. Um, because well, I, you know, it's such a it's such an important service that our community, our world needs is therapy, and um, I also realize that so many people go into this space knowledgeable about the profession, but not knowledgeable about the business aspect. So it just it, it lightens my heart to hear that that my books yeah. are being of service. Yeah, great, right? Yeah, and um, what I'll do is, of course, in the show notes, have links to everything, so oh, uh, for people to to connect with all that. So Mike, tell, well, I guess maybe a good place to start is for those that aren't familiar with it, can you kind of give in a nutshell this whole idea about Profit First? And also, I know that a big part of the Profit First um, idea has as much as anything to do with your story and your journey in business. So tell folks about all that. Yeah, so I'll tell you a little, little bit about the premise first, because uh, I think that's the juicy stuff that we need to know. I remember meeting with my accountant and uh, him mandating effectively that I understood how to read an income statement, a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, you know, tie those things in together. He told me to know my KPIs, which is the key performance indicators, my budget, uh, this thing called the OCR, which is the operating cash ratio metric, which he implored upon me to understand. With all these things going on, what I did was whenever I was in the office or wherever I was traveling, I would hop on my phone or my computer, log into my bank, and I had a really simple system for managing my numbers. Instead of looking at all that stuff he told me to look at, I would just log in the bank account and follow a simple system. If, if I had money, I could spend it. And if I didn't, you know, panic would ensue. <laughs> so, uh, and it would frustrate him because he said, the, the worst thing to look at is your bank account because it does not reflect the state of your business. It's an understanding of, of the other documents. Well, what I've come to believe is that many entrepreneurs, perhaps even the majority of entrepreneurs, actually follow this similar system to me, this bank balance accounting. We trust our gut and our instinct. We're very good at um, serving our clients, at our profession, maybe selling our services. But when it comes to the monotony of the numbers, that for many of us is not our gift. So we revert to this very simple system. What I've come to believe now, instead of changing who we are, we should channel who we are. Meaning, if you log into your bank accounts and see how much money you have, let's have a system that sits there and then let's channel that existing behavior to get the result we want. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a simple behavioral technique. Maybe actually, I'm not too familiar with the therapy industry, but maybe it's a technique used is, is kind of redirecting an energy as opposed to trying to stop it. So what we did, uh, what I did with Profit First is we, the first step is we literally take your profit first. As sales come in, revenue comes into your therapy business, you take a predetermined percentage of that money and allocate it to another account called profit. So instead of having that one account where all the money's uh, going, we're now starting to sliver that money or cut the money up into different accounts. Profit being the most important in the first one. Also, there's another one called owner's pay. This is to reserve money for the owner themselves um, to, to pay yourself a reasonable salary. Then there's one for taxes because sure enough, April 15th rolls around and many of us right. get caught you know, unexpectedly with mm -hmm. no money and panic ensues. So the business is going to reserve that for us. And there can be other accounts too, but the one other account that's mandatory is operating expenses. And what you'll see is if say a thousand dollars comes in this week or whatever the number is, mm -hmm. a thousand dollars comes in. We, I used to think, Oh, I have a thousand dollars from my business. That's not true. 10% of that hundred bucks, for example, may go to profit. 30% or 40%, let's say 40% may go to paying myself a salary. So that's $400. I've reserved for taxes, maybe another 10% there. So it's $100. So now, four plus one plus one is six. That means there's only 400 left to operate the business. We don't have $1,000 to run our business. We have $400 to run our business. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that's the, the basic premise of the system. But I, I will tell you, because you asked about my story, I, uh, before this, and you were kind enough to share in the introduction, I had the good fortune of building and selling companies. I had the misfortune which is not on my resume uh, of those companies not being healthy financially whatsoever. I was actually lucky I sold them. That's where I made my money. Mm -hmm. I also had this then belief that we make profit as an event, that if you can stick this business out long enough, 
profit will happen. And so I said, well, okay, I sold two companies. Clearly, I just got to build, 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 and then sell one day. Well, my third attempt was a disaster. I was an angel investor in a mix of companies. I was totally full of both ignorance and arrogance, which is like a you know a deadly combination. <laughs> and um, that 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 failed miserably. I was on the verge of bankruptcy. I lost all my money. I had to restart, and that triggered subsequently this new understanding that profit does not come last. That's what we've always been told, by the way. You know, profit is the, it's sales minus expenses equals profit. That's how we run our businesses. And I, I believe that to be a total fallacy because when profit comes last, we are saying it can wait. You know, it's like saying my health comes last. Like that means mm -hmm. oh, my health isn't important. When mm -hmm. your health is important, you say my health comes first. So that put this new notion in my mind. And uh, now for 10 years, I've been living it. Um, and the new book, the new version came out about a year and a half ago. I, I have it there strategically mm -hmm. over my shoulder, <laughs> uh, you know, well positioned for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. But um, that for in the last year and a half, over a hundred thousand companies that we're aware of now are doing the profit first method. Wow. Wow. Well, it's been a, I, I know it's been a game changer for me and it's just, um, you know, I'm, I'm still getting my head around it uh, a lot. And I know, yeah, as I mentioned um, uh, to you before we started, Casey, who's on the podcast with us, um, actually introduced me to it. I was listening to Casey on another podcast uh, with uh, Joe Sanok, and she mentioned Profit First. Awesome. And so um, I, I said, okay, I've got to find out about this because Casey's superpower got, falls in line with your your most recent book, Clockwork, about getting systems in place to um, have your business run itself. And, and Casey has built a multi-million dollar counseling and therapy practice. Boom. And so, yeah. So Casey, I know you've probably got a ton of questions for Mike. So I'm going to let you jump in if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, I'll give it a shot. There's so much. Um, you know, one thing I guess I want to say right off is that I really admire your perspective on on just um, business and the way that you look at finances and the way that you look at companies and the way that you look at systems. And it's almost like flip opposite of what your common sense would tell you to do. And yeah. that's, yeah, and that's kind of how I am. So like everything in business is what I was supposed to do. I just did the opposite. And most of the time it worked. And so, <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. There's a saying, like, I don't know if it's about horses or whatever, but if, if, if all the horses are going for water this way, the likelihood of finding water for you is much better when it's the opposite direction. Yeah. And I found that to be true in so many principles. It's, it's this contrarian effect effectively. And so I'm, I'm happy you see that. Mm -hmm. um, and it does seem to work. It does. Yeah, I was on a QA and a yesterday. Um, I do some Q&As in some mastermind groups in the mental health field. And someone was asking me, um, you know, when should I hire? And, you know, I kind of have a few systems in place or some different metrics to help people identify when that's a good idea. But in your new book, Clockwork, you know, you're like, if you think you should, then do it. And you know what I mean? And, and so it's just been really it's not like it's just me saying that now that I feel like I've got um, this, this backbone and this corner yeah, yeah. of what you're doing. It's like, Oh yeah. Well, if he says that's right. And then Casey's but, telling me, then it's, that's probably true. You know? So um, I appreciate that part of it as well. Oh, it's my pleasure. It, it, it's funny. Um, it's interesting. There's this weird shift that people have when they read it, something in writing in a book versus mm -hmm. just hearing it. It seems more credible when it's in a book. Yeah. Now, I, I did, just to give you some background, for Clockwork, it, it was six years of research. I wish I knew of you back then because I, I would have interviewed you. I, I interviewed about 100 different experts, industry agnostic, like you know, across mm -hmm. all industries, to find the common thread of business efficiency, what I call organizational efficiency. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, and Gordon, Gordon was horsing around earlier with the yeah. ACDC. <laughs> uh, I love that band. I couldn't believe I didn't recognize the song right off the bat. But <laughs> there's a business flow that has the same acronym ACDC as the band. Uh, maybe it's not as awesome as the band, but it's still <laughs> pretty amazing. Every business goes through four distinct phases, not necessarily all in the same sequence, but these four distinct phases. 
And if we identify where we're struggling or where our slowdown is, if we fix that one phase of the business, the entire business will elevate. So the phases, it's an acronym, ACDC. The first phase every business experiences is called attract. It's where we need to attract prospects, clientele for our our therapy business. Mm -hmm. The next uh, phase is called C, which stands for convert. This is where that prospect who inquired about our services now becomes a customer. Mm -hmm. The third phase is called deliver. This is where we deliver our offering. And then the final phase is C, which stands for collect, which is now the exchange of money. And uh, some businesses reverse around. Sometimes you collect the revenue before you deliver a service. But knowing that every business goes through those four stages of flow, what we do is when we look at our business, well, let me kind of give a counterpoint first. Most business owners try to fix everything in their business, right? We're not growing fast enough. Things aren't as good as we want. We don't have as much money as we need. And they try to do everything. But in this model, the ACDC model, if we identify where the weakest part is of the business and simply elevate that, we'll see that the entire business elevates. It's kind of like, like a chain. If, if you want to strengthen a chain, you don't strengthen every link. You actually find what the weakest link is. And by just strengthening that, the entire strength of the chain has been elevated. Mm-hmm. So we look at our business and say, you know, um, you know we have a, a very few people who are becoming customers. Well, then we likely have a conversion issue. And so we look at conversion and say, are we not selling to people's real challenge or what, what will motivate them to sign up? Um, or do we have an attraction issue? So it's, it's that struggling point or the point before it that's causing the problem. Are we, do we have not just enough prospect generation, we have a marketing issue. Mm-hmm. But just mm-hmm. what I encourage people is to look for the slowdown in your business in that model, then see if the problem is at that point or somewhere preceding it, fix that one spot and the entire business will elevate. Yeah. And that's kind of what Profit First does as well. I mean, because I view Profit First as a system um, to increase your profitability. I mean, and you you may disagree or I'm sure you have a better way to describe it. But a lot of times I'll look at um, a, a practice's financials and everything's in line except the profit and it's off. And, you know, that's the easiest thing to fix. And so, you know, what would you say to someone that is, um, doing mostly yeah. all of the right things, but the money is not where they want it. Yeah, so uh, there's a term for that. It's, that's called being a human being. Uh, <laughs> it's very, very common. It's very human. And I want to first say that if, if you, if someone watching this right now or listening in struggles with that exact problem, I want you to know you're not alone. It's very common. And it's very easily fixable. I think the first thing to understand is... Um, there's this thing called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Actually, you all are probably extremely familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. It was relatively new to me, this Maslowian hierarchy of needs, but it speaks to human needs. And my understanding of it is foundationally, we need you know, oxygen, for example. Like if we don't have oxygen um, and uh, nothing else will matter unless we get oxygen is the foundational, most important need. And we very quickly revert to that if we are suffocating we will gasp for air, we'll do whatever it takes. Then, it, then we move up to the kind of nutrition, shelter, love and acceptance, all the way up to self-actualization. I believe this same hierarchy of needs exists for a business organization. Now, I believe the oxygen level is sales, meaning if I have no inbound cash flow, if, if no one's engaging my services, I'm out of business. That's the oxygen for a business. The next level up, what I call the nutrition, the food for a business, is profit. So, if I don't have profitability, my business actually starts starving to death. Um, we wilt away. The sad part, to your point, Casey, the sad part is many people, when they don't have profitability, actually revert to pushing more sales. Like, we're not selling enough. We need to sell more. Which, if we do the analogy, that's gasping for air when your body is starving for food. It's not going to solve the situation. So the process at this next level up is to start taking little chunks of nutrition, cash for your business. As money flows in, the simple solution is take a predetermined percentage, allocate it, hide it away from yourself, and run your business off the remainder. And when people hear that, by the way, they said, well, that's, that's totally crazy because there's no money left right now. You're saying if I take it first, there'll be money left. It won't be. It's, it's a shell game. And the thing is, it's not a shell game. It's a behavioral shift. There was a study uh, documented by a guy named Parkinson. It's called Parkinson's Law. 
Um, and it was really, his first essay was really more of a cynical essay about government and so forth. But the core point was this, that as a resource increases in its availability, the more we consume of it. Um, and as it decreases in availability, wherever that resource is, we consume less of it and we become innovative and conservative in its consumption. For example, uh, and I read about this in the book, toothpaste. Like, if you can understand just basically how toothpaste works, you'll understand how money works. Tonight, anyone listening in right now will experience this. When you go to bed to brush your teeth, if there is a full tube of toothpaste, you know, we take out our toothbrush and we just put this long bead on there. It's like, <laughs> put this bead on. right? And, and if it, I travel a lot. I'm actually this afternoon heading out to Las Vegas. I am always shocked when I visit a hotel, you just never know what to anticipate in the water pressure. Sometimes you turn the faucet on and like little dribbles come out. Other times, like in Vegas, often in the middle of a desert, you turn that water faucet on and it comes out with such force that the toothpaste like slingshots across the room. <laughs> but I don't care because I have a new tube. So I put it on, yeah. which is the first part of Parkinson's law. Full supply of toothpaste, we use it excessively. I mean, it's just, it's just toothpaste after all. If the scenario tonight for people listening in is that shriveled up, you know, prune-like tube where there's nothing in there, it's unbelievable how our behavior changes. All of a sudden, we become this Herculean super being where we, you know, push and we grind as hard as we can. There's that vein you never knew who you had on your forehead starts pulsing, you know, and we extract the toothpaste, but now we use a little droplet of it. We find a way to get it out and we use very little and we will then brush our teeth with that. The point is, in a full tube of toothpaste lasts for most people, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. An empty tube of toothpaste seems to last three or four weeks. <laughs> so it's not the amount of toothpaste, it's how we use it. In business, the same way. When we allow all the money that comes into our business, we use all that money to run our business, we have a full tube of toothpaste. We use it excessively without even knowing because it's just a little bit of money after all. Mm -hmm. But when we intentionally constrain the amount of money available to run the business, we've taken our profit out and hide it away. Now it's the empty tube of toothpaste. We all of a sudden have these Herculean strengths. We become very innovative. We twist and turn, if you will, our business to extract more value of what we're doing. And that profit starts accumulating. The, the final point I want to make too is a mental shift. You won't become rich overnight, but a mental shift will happen almost immediately. When you see even that you've tucked away a small percentage of money, maybe there's 50 bucks in that profit account, you'll start feeling this, this empowerment going, oh my gosh, I got, I got 50 bucks in profit? Wow, what if I keep doing this? And you see the money accumulating and it starts becoming very empowering to see profit accumulating on the side. And, and we inherently now operate our business more effectively. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that, I think that's the thing that just really resonated for me is, you know, I think in business, especially if, you know, I'm one of those business kind of podcast geeks, listen to a lot of stuff. And there's, exactly. there's usually a lot of, um, of hype or really around just making money, acquiring this big uh, amassing of wealth. And the truth of the matter is, I think most of us, both therapists and anybody else for that matter, we really just want uh, to maintain a lifestyle yeah. that fits who we are as people. And, you know, being able to take the profit first system takes the pressure off of trying to do a whole lot really quickly. It's just really about the consistency and persistence uh, that we, that we put into our businesses and practices. You know, there's uh there's these sayings of hustle and grind. Very popular yeah. right now. What's your hustle like? You got to grind it out. And um, I actually believe it's hurting us. I, I'm not a fan of that language. Now, I, I understand the intent behind it. I, I think it's appropriate. We can't just sit back and, and drink margaritas and hope our business is going to grow. But I think how it's being interpreted by many entrepreneurs is for my business to be successful, I have to put in more and more effort. My progress is linked specifically and exclusively to my effort. And that's not true. What it's linked to is your your ability to think about your business and organize and coordinate the resources that you have, you being one of the resources, but the other resources you have. I also believe that this, um, the popularity of having a bigger and bigger business, which I bought into myself, I wanted to have that billion dollar company. I believe it's a misnomer. I now believe that the right size business can find you. You know, we, we're doing, we're running these businesses um, 
to provide ourselves with comfort, financial freedom, to be of service to others. And there's a certain point the business can become unwieldy. And now we're not being of service. We're too distracted. We're too overwhelmed and stressed. Um, a business can, can grow in revenue, but the profit can struggle. And that is horrible. You want to talk mm -hmm. about a horrible lifestyle. I've had friends who have these multi-million dollar businesses, people I met through interviews too, that aren't making a penny. What I've now have concluded, uh, they're just saying that revenue is vanity, profit is sanity. I've changed that. I think that revenue is a stress factor because what revenue is, is an obligation. Every dollar we take, we have an obligation now to deliver a service in return. So as revenue grows, our sense of obligation grows. And that's good, that's fine, but it can become overwhelming. It can become so overwhelming, it can become stressful because there's more and more obligation, it becomes more and more stress. The serum to this is profit. Profit reduces that stress component. And uh, if we try to grow our way uh, into success, we actually often grow our way out of business. Mm -hmm. So we need to balance profitability throughout and allow the right size business to find you. What feels good is right. You know, doing this podcast, there's there's just so much that I learn from other people. And that's, uh, you know, the reason that I decided to do kind of an interview format with this podcast. And over this past year, I've just had so many aha moments and just so many things that I've learned from the people that I've interviewed. And I think for, uh, as you're probably hearing from Mike McCallowitz, a big part of what we do in our businesses and in our private practice has to do with mindset. And I think one of the big things that really struck home for me when, when reading Profit First and now in the middle of reading Clockwork is what Mike just said, is that let let the let yourself find the right size for your business. I think, as he said, we get a lot of hype about, you know, bigger is better. And somehow or another, if we we grow this big thing, um, it's going to it's going to create, um, you know, somehow or another, we're going to be happier or somehow or another, we're going to be more satisfied. But I think letting your business find the right size with the right size for you, uh, you know, obviously with Casey, her size is going to be much bigger than probably what I'll ever aspire to do with my practice, but I'm learning from her nonetheless. Um, and I think Casey would tell you that her practice is the right size for her. So I think that was a great just kind of take home point for me there at the end. Um, find what fits for you. Do what is works best for you and your practice and however you have it organized and how you set it up. And um, I think that's where you will really thrive. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is just part one of this interview. And so there's much more to come. And I'm excited to, to put out the second part of this. It will be out next week, depending on when you're listening to this. It'll be episode number 50. So that's uh, halfway to 100. So uh, big milestones uh, for me in this podcast. Uh, do go over and uh, enter yourself in that contest. Uh, the... Uh, Go to practiceoftherapy.com slash contests with an S, and um, that way you'll get a chance to uh, possibly win the two books, the Profit First book and Clockwork by Mike McCallowitz, and uh, along with that uh, Tumblr, that Practice of Therapy Tumblr. Uh, and depending on when you're listening to this, um, I still have some room in my mastermind groups, and I'm hoping that we can get it completely full by the time we start on September the 7th. Um, and even if you're listening after September 7th, still, if you're interested in joining a group or doing some consulting with me, uh, I would love for you to get in contact with me and we'll, we'll work things out. So get in touch with me over at practiceoftherapy.com. You can email me at Gordon at practiceoftherapy.com. So stay tuned, folks, for part number two of the practice of therapy uh, of this interview with uh, rather this inter interview with Mike McCallowitz. And uh, take care, folks, and uh, stay tuned for session number 50. Take care, folks. Have a good rest of your week or weekend whenever you're listening to this. You have been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. 
please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. If you haven't already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.